Dear audience, after considering general properties of tissues and mechanisms of their embryonic development, we proceed to a detailed analysis of the main types of tissues within main tissue groups. This lecture is devoted to the study of the structure and function of epithelial tissues in physiological conditions, mechanisms of their regeneration and transformation under the influence of adverse factors of external and internal environment. Before delving into the study of epithelia, let us recall what tissue is as the main subject of research in histology. In the most concise form, tissue is a system of specialized cells and their derivatives that have emerged in the process of evolution, united by common development, structure, and functions. During evolution, four main tissue groups have been developed. These are epithelia, connective and supporting tissues, muscle tissues, and nerve tissue. Epithelial tissues are the most ancient histological structures that arise first in both phylogenesis and ontogenesis. It is precisely epithelial tissues that are located at the body's boundaries, ensuring its interaction with the external environment, performing a barrier function, and capable of secretion. All epithelia share common morphological features. They occupy a boundary position, separating the internal environment of the organism from the external. All types of epithelial tissues are characterized by cellular structure due to which epithelial cells or epitheliocytes form continuous layers. Epithelia are located on the basement membrane, separating the cellular layers from the underlying loose connective tissue. Being at the border with the external environment, epithelia are actively exposed to its influences, hence they possess a high capacity for physiological and reparative regeneration. Let's consider these structural features of epithelial tissues in more detail. Cellular structure is the most important property of epithelial tissues. When we talk about cellular structure, we mean the absence of any intercellular structures, including fibers, blood, and lymphatic vessels. In this sense, epithelia are non-vascular tissue. However, there are always narrow intercellular spaces between epithelial cells through which nutrients and metabolic products circulate. The crucial element of epithelium that ensures the cohesion of cells into a coherent layer is the developed system of intercellular junctions. The epithelial cell's trophism is provided by diffusion of substances from blood vessels located in the underlying loose connective tissue. The presence of a basement membrane separating the epithelial layer from the underlying loose connective tissue is the most important property of epithelia. The basement membrane is a section of the extracellular matrix that serves as an elastic support for the epithelium and largely determines the architecture of the epithelial layer. It acts as a selective barrier through which substance exchange occurs. This structure performs an important demarcating function preventing the ingrowth of epithelium into the underlying connective tissue. In conditions of malignant transformation and invasive growth of the epithelium, the basement membrane is destroyed, tumor cells enter the bloodstream and form metastases. The basement membrane is composed of a complex of proteins, glycoproteins and proteolicans, which are synthesized by both epitheliocytes and cells of the underlying connective tissue. Under electron microscopy, it is visible that the basement membrane has a thickness of about 100 millimeters and consists of two components. Firstly, there is the basal lamina, formed by non-fibrillar proteins. The second component of the basement membrane is the fibrillar layer, made up of collagen type 4 and is a product of fibroblasts from the loose connective tissue. 
Attachment of epitheliocytes to the basement membrane is ensured by specialized intercellular junctions, hemidesmosomes, as well as proteins and fibrillar structures. The most important element of the ultrastructure of epitheliocytes, ensuring the maintenance of cell shape and the formation of intercellular contacts, is the cytoskeleton. The main components of the cytoskeleton are microtubules, actin filaments, and intermediate filaments. The specific feature of intermediate filaments of epithelial tissues is the fact that they are formed by special proteins, keratins, which serve as markers of epithelial cells. This property of keratins plays a significant role in the diagnosis of malignant neoplasms. Immunocytochemical examination of tumor cells using antibodies against keratins allows an oncologist to determine the source of tumor development, which is especially important in the case of studying distant metastases, and to select the optimal treatment regimen. Epithelial cells within a layer exhibit apico-basal polarity, with the apical and basal poles of the cells having different structures. This phenomenon is determined by the border position of epithelia and the various conditions of cell interaction with the external and internal environment. The specialized structures of the apical poles of epithelial cells are microvilli. They are formed by plasma membrane extensions, providing a significant increase in the cell absorptive surface area. Microvilli are characteristic of intestinal epithelium. The second type of specialized apical structures are cilia, whose movement facilitates the transport of fluids on the surface of the layer, for example, mucus in the bronchial tree. The crucial structures determining the properties of the epithelial layer are intercellular junctions of various types, usually forming junctional complexes. Primarily, these include mechanical junctions that provide a strong bond between cell membranes. These are tight or occluding junctions, adhering junctions or adhesive strips and belts, desmosomes and hemidesmosomes, as well as interdigitations. Alongside mechanical contacts, epithelia also widely featured gap junctions or nexuses, communication structures that facilitate the exchange of molecules between the neighboring cells. The entire variety of epithelial tissues can be systematized in the form of a morphofunctional classification. Firstly, it takes into account their functional specialization. According to this criterion, all epithelia are represented by two main types. The first of them is the surface or covering epithelia. They cover the outer surface of the body or line the inner cavities of the body and internal hollow organs. As an example of these localizations, the epidermis, the outer layer of the skin, and the epithelial lining of the trachea are shown on the slide. A specialized variant of surface epithelia is sensory epithelia, capable of perceiving specific signals within individual sensory organs. The taste buds of the lingual epithelial lining are a vivid example of these receptor structures. The second type of epithelial tissues is glandular epithelia, formed by specialized secretory cells called glandulocytes. Glandular epithelial cells contain a sophisticated biosynthetic apparatus and secretory inclusions or granules. They produce secretions that perform essential functions for the organism. Glandular epithelia form glands located in the walls of hollow organs or can be independent organs themselves. Glands are formed during embryogenesis from the covering epithelial layer, 
from which some epitheliocytes grow into the thickness of organs or beyond their walls. Two types of glands are distinguished, exocrine and endocrine glands. In exocrine glands, the secretion synthesized by glandulocytes is released to the surface of the organ through excretory ducts. In endocrine glands, excretory ducts are reduced, so the glandular cells release their secretions into the intercellular spaces from which they diffuse into the blood vessels. The classification of the surface epithelia consistently accounts for a set of structural features. Firstly, the number of the cell layers is determined, and based on this criterion, simple unstratified epithelia are distinguished. In simple epithelia, all cells of the layer are connected to the basement membrane, while in stratified epithelia, only the deepest layer of cells contacts the basement membrane. The second structural feature of disclassification is the cell shape. When classifying simple epithelia, the shape of all cells in the layer is considered, distinguishing between squamous, cuboidal, and columnar epithelial cells. When classifying stratified epithelia, the shape of the cells in the most mature superficial layer is taken into account as well as their ability to keratinize. This last feature determines two morphological variants, keratinizing and non-keratinizing stratified epithelia. In simple epithelia, morphological specializations of the apical surface of cells are also considered. According to this criterion, microvillus, ciliate, and some other varieties of epitheliocytes, with stereocilia, as well as without cilia and microvilli, are distinguished. Located at the border with the external environment, epithelia are actively exposed to its influences, thus possessing a high ability for cell renewal or physiological regeneration. Epithelial tissues consist of cells with relatively short lifespans, characterized by high intensity of proliferation and programmed cell death, with these processes strictly balanced. Sources of proliferation are self-sustaining populations of stem cells. Cell renewal in simple epithelia can be most vividly illustrated by the example of the lining of the small intestine. The process occurs very rapidly, within five to seven days, and is characterized by zonality. Proliferation of stem cells takes place in cambial zones at the base of crypts, in vaginations of the mucous membrane. Differentiating cells gradually move along the basement membrane towards the tip of the villus. In the apical zone of the villus, genetic programs for the death of mature epitheliocytes are activated. As a result of disruption in the synthesis of cell adhesion factors to the basement membrane, epitheliocytes slough off into the lumen of the intestine. The dynamics of this process can be clearly observed in the animation. In stratified epithelia, the zone of proliferation of cambial elements is located at the basement membrane. Differentiating cells gradually move towards the outer layers of the epithelium, dion transform into horny scales, detaching from the surface layer. The complete renewal rate of the human epidermis takes from 20 to 30 days.
the action of damaging factors from the external and internal environment can lead to abnormal growth or dysplasia. The term dysplasia refers to the development of persistent abnormalities in the formation and structure of individual cells and tissues. The development of dysplasia can be attributed to both genetic abnormalities and external influences, often of viral and bacterial origin. Morphologically, dysplasia manifests as a disruption of cell polarity and the appearance of various structurally atypical forms of epithelial cells. These manifestations are referred to as polymorphism. Disorders of epithelial proliferation and differentiation underlying dysplasia can progress to precancerous growth called neoplasia. Neoplasia is new, uncontrolled growth of cells that is not under physiologic control. Ely neoplastic growth is often reversible and does not always result in cancer. All neoplasms can be subclassified as either benign or malignant. In the latter case, denoted by the term cancer, atypical epithelial cells are capable of aggressively disrupting the basement membrane, invading the underlying connective tissue, and spreading through the bloodstream and lymphatic system as metastases. Various epithelia, developing from one embryonic primordium, may undergo transformation into another type under certain abnormal conditions. This phenomenon is denoted by the term metaplasia. Metaplasia is the appearance in an organ of a tissue that differs in structure and function from the originally existing tissue. Along with dysplasia, metaplasia can also be a cause of neoplastic processes in epithelial tissues. A typical example of metaplasia is the transformation of ciliate pseudostratified away epithelium into stratified epithelium under the influence of various pathogenic factors. Such changes have been detected in microscopic examination of lung structure in avid cigarette smokers and in patients infected with the coronavirus infection coded 19. Dear students, in this lecture we have examined the fundamental properties of epithelia, the most phylogenetically ancient group of tissues, playing a significant role in ensuring the vital functions of the human body. Epithelia are a source of development for many pathological processes, primarily tumor growth. It is important to emphasize that the achievements of modern oncology are largely based on understanding the intricate mechanisms regulating the proliferation and differentiation of epithelial tissue cells. Stay with us for new our next meetings on the Histonavigator channel.